in almost every exchange as we go through our day, that stuff is going on. So for this individual and other people who are thinking, I worked really hard to get to this space, but I don't know what to do next. The things that have caught our attention over the course of our life that have been appealing to us, that have been looking for us, and by that I mean... We are having a conversation with you, Richard, about this nebulous thing that is purpose. Mm -hmm. We're doing this conference in June, a day on purpose, first one ever. People don't get it. People, they, they want to get it because at its core, there's something that it's pulling at. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, resistance. There's a lot of uncertainty around it mm -hmm. uh, because it's not. Uh, the same for everybody and and so it's been interesting to to try and get everybody to listen to a, a single message and, and it land mm. for them and 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 their context for what might be missing that has them uh, feeling really good about life yeah, it's not like the home and garden show where i can go learn how to make a deck or the auto show where i'm going to go see my new car right it's it's not tangible in front no. of you no this is an effort to put the tangible in front of people by measure of story yeah right so we're gonna we're gonna create some stories these are real people mm -hmm. that have gone through and experienced some things that many people experience and is a, a catalyst for why it's important to have these conversations yeah so the very first one we're going to talk about is M miss misses miss we'll say ms so the first one we're going to talk about is Miss Retiree. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she's been doing a thing for a long time, a single focus. Mm -hmm. Hell, my, my, my wife's mom is a really great example of this. Yeah. Secretary, done her thing, clocked in 30 years, and is looking forward to the end game. Mm -hmm. Quote, unquote, retirement. Yeah. Now you talk about this lady and the experience now having hit retirement and the real, the realization that I'm bored, that she set herself up with this, this, uh, this fantastic idea, this picture painted in, in her mind about what retirement would look like. Mm -hmm. And then she got there. But it was clear that the, the story that was created had some gaps because mm -hmm. now she's bored. Yeah. What, what is happening for her right now? Yeah, it, it's, um, I don't, we didn't really dig into this a whole lot, but I have to think it's, there would be some measure, I think, of being disappointed. Right. Because we, we've worked our whole lives. She's worked her whole life to get to this point. The anticipation of no longer needing to work because, you know, probably the mortgage is taken care of and retirement savings are where they need to be or, you know, as close as they need to be. It's okay. The family can cope now without her working anymore. And that's, you know, like could be 30 plus years of, of work. And the significance of the end of that, in some measure, depends on were you looking forward to Monday most of the time or were you looking forward to Friday some of the time or maybe a lot of the time? And I think that's an important factor we may want to come back to. So now the, the dates arrived and it was last fall and yay, hooray, I'm done. And I know the nice parties and the cards and be well and enjoy your retirement. You earned it, blah, blah, blah. Maybe the, the, cuff and the cup and the goofy retirement cards were, yep. were, were gifts and the most recent conversation was um i'm looking for work because i'm i'm bored it's a long, big long day and when you take work out of what used to the pay, place it used to take what do you do with all that time the other hours were fine i have my morning routine i have my evening routine you know the fitness stuff that people do and the friend routine that's all okay but it's this big chunk of time in the middle of the day where there's nothing, there's no to-dos on that to-do list anymore. And the anticipation was, yay, yeah, awesome. That's gonna be fantastic. Think of all the stuff I can do. So there's no limitation on time anymore. 
And the limitation now is what do I want to do? Do you remember being a little kid on your bike with the buddies in your neighborhood? And you're all, it's summer afternoon and nobody really knows what to do. And this is probably before we all had phones. And one person says, what do you want to do? And the other one says, I don't know. What do you want to do? And the other one says, I don't know. What do you want to do? Those times well. Until somebody <laughs> decided what we were going to do. It's almost like that, only we've worked for our whole lives to get to the point where we didn't have to do anything in particular. And we didn't expect it to be a conversation in our minds about what, what are we going to no. do? No. I mean, the concept of, of, of in some way, not re not regretting retirement, but but really thinking like, wow, this isn't really what I thought. I thought there'd be more to it. So not that the, going back to work is a problem, and I, I don't mean to uh, in any way demean the but fact it's a default. The, well, yeah, because there's all this time and I don't know what to do with it. And not doing anything isn't an option. And there's lots of things the person could do. Any of us could, you know, we could go back to work, we could volunteer and all of those sort of cliche responses to the dilemma, but I don't know that it's really getting to the root of the problem. And so that's kind of what we're talking about. If at any point in my life and at this point, I haven't come to terms with my why, if I don't really yet understand what role my life has in this universe, in the world I live in, with the people that, that cross my path, if I don't understand what that means, I could very well get up at the end of a long career and not really know what the heck I'm going to do with today. And it was, as a result, that's not very comfortable to get up and think, I've earned this time, this prize. And you know what? I thought it would feel better. I thought it would be like, yay, high five, high 10. And it doesn't feel like that. So that's one of the reasons we're, we're moving in this direction to foster a conversation around, well, what is my purpose? What do I really want to do? And I think fundamentally for almost anybody that's at this place, it's, it's coming back to, well, who am I really? What's the purpose of my life here? Well, that's a hard question to answer. But if we go to the things that point to the answer, things like, what am I really good at? What do I really love to do? If we could spend some time with just those two questions and the people that would have answers for us, the people that know us really well and people that care about us, we'd start to come up with some really fantastic content that would start to point in directions of what we can do with this vast expanse of uncommitted time that we've earned. We're entitled to that time. We've worked a whole life to get there. As opposed to it just arriving. Yeah. It's because like that doesn't happen. this big empty bus arrived out front and somebody says, hey, honey, that bus is here again. And it's full and it's, I mean, it's empty. You have no idea where it's going. And fundamentally, all it's going to do is drive around for eight or 10 hours, going absolutely nowhere, achieving absolutely nothing, and drop you back at home at the end of the day. That sounds super exciting. Doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Sign me up for that. Said no one ever. Yeah. So there is a, uh, what I'm hearing uh, for those that are in, faced with this opportunity truly, yeah. is not to fill it with the predictable action, the default action of yeah. a new job or, or more work because, well, that goes against the whole premise of of having gone gotten to this point in your life anyways. Yeah. You, you don't have to do the work anymore. We are, by nature, we are creative. Human beings, all of us, we, and you point to the, the young group of kids coming together and yeah. bored, what do we do, what do we do? Yeah. And lo and behold, in the moment, you think of something to do. We always do. And it's likely something that when at the end of it, uh, all those kids are like, oh man, that was an amazing adventure mm -hmm. because you got out of your own way and you just started to be curious about things again. That is so profound. That is so profound what you just said. We got out, got out of our own way. Because mm -hmm. you, you have to think, when I get to that place where I just don't know what to do and I'm trying to come up with solutions, I'm... I'm in a very well-worn 
thinking process, if you will. Yeah, it's 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 a groomed path, man. Totally. You know exactly where it's going to go. And, and it served us well, frankly, through the course of our career. It, it was that thinking that allowed us to solve the problems we faced every day. But now we're using that approach, perhaps, to solve the challenge in front of us. And the challenge has changed in a very, very important way. Um, and we have to really get out of our own way to, to unpack the really cool stuff that's inside that person that's faced with the question, what am I going to do? How am I going to use this time? Uh, to start getting back to, like you said, the creative approach to come up with something that a solution we've never thought of before. Yeah. And where did that come from? Well, it comes from right in here, from that innate giftedness that's always been there, from those talents that have always been there. And what they're looking for now is a new way to play. You know, what's interesting, what's showing up for me right now is this opportunity for those of us who have been typically very busy running the groomed path, mm -hmm. uh, and knowing what the outcome is going to be to, uh, to just be okay in the, the not knowing what to do next, mm -hmm. but being intentional about thinking about what I could do next to entertain the ideas that you might have previously dismissed yeah. because you didn't have the time, you, you didn't have the capacity or whatever, or whatever it might have been, that now is the time where those types of things could actually be the thing that is now uh, leaving you more fulfilled and, uh, and with a, a sense of, uh, of feeling truly accomplished at the end of a day as opposed to just running through the motions. Yeah, and, and we talked about this in a previous conversation where you know, it's important to get to a place where it's okay to not have the answer. Right. It's okay to not be okay. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, and there are solutions and we're coming up with one. In this case, this person is thinking, well, I can go back to work and that'll solve the to-do problem. Um, it doesn't address the meaning and fulfillment no, problem. No. It doesn't. And it uh, will leave her feeling in another space, just a different version of, well, this, yeah. this isn't it. Right. And, and what can happen then is the problem says, oh, okay, so you don't want to play now. You don't want to give me airtime now. That's okay. I'll just sit here with my arms folded and I'll wait for you. And when you decide to stop work the next time, I'm going to be waiting. But here's the deal. I'm going to come, I'll be waiting for you and I'm going to be bigger and I'm going to be fatter and I'm going to be crankier and I'm going to be more impatient for you to find an answer. Um, so it, it may be palatable for you right now, but a year from now, two years from now, I'm likely to be more ornery about, hello, I've been waiting your whole life to have this figured out. Yeah, that's where the, uh, the resignation and, and the... Uh the bitterness of life starts to settle in and mm -hmm. you begin to question and wonder what was this all for? Yeah. This is the objective we were all running towards mm -hmm. and now we're here and um, it's not, it's not what it got created. Well, what do we do now? We have time and space. Mm -hmm. What would be the, the biggest difference maker, the one, two, or three steps to take mm -hmm. that would get you back into a momentum to discover something, to create something. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do we have to do when we're stuck, when we find ourselves faced with anything and everything? So I was doing this talk last week and um, and talking about the root of purpose. And my point was that we were all conceived with it. It's, it's in our DNA is what I'm trying to say. This, uh, this innate giftedness, these talents that I talk about are, are part of how we were made up. And this week I'm going to be talking about um, this concept of pay attention to yourself. Mm. Well, what does that mean, pay attention to yourself? Uh, in conversation just usual conversation, like even like we've been having, although this is more substantive. 
it's sort of like a verbal tennis match. You say something or ask a question and I respond to it and then you respond to that and then I respond to that. And of course, everyone that's listening is riveted and cap, you know, saying, hey, come watch this. You got to see this. It's awesome. <laughs> and um, I, we, I don't know that we really always pay attention to the things that are coming out of our own mouth. So I invite people to do a couple things. First, when they come to an event, when they're watching something that they see, something like this online, consider that there's a reason deeper than the thing that's on the surface. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing some of your content online and saying that we're just about to go live on the Just Live podcast and jump in and have a listen. And so I might think, well, okay, I'm gonna jump in and have a listen. And so it's sort of a mechanical process. It's like somebody says, click here, I do. And, and then I listen and, and maybe it resonates, maybe it doesn't. And then I go move away, move away from it. But the reality is I've been inoculated with the content of that podcast. And whether I'm thinking about it or not, it's inside here now. And it's interacting with everything else that's inside there. And it's creating a new meaning. It's creating a new narrative. And when I pay attention to myself, I start to uncover what it is. When, so at this talk I gave last week, there's about 38 people there, most of whom have never met themselves. Met, sorry, met themselves, met each other. Most likely haven't met themselves <laughs> either. There's a Freudian slip, so pay attention to myself. That's right. Um, and I invited them to, to uh, well, I asked them, why did you come today? And, and sort of been mumbling, well, I registered for this event, so I came. Is that not okay? I said, That's it's so, so uh, automatic and the default, right? Completely. Yeah, yeah. And I said, what if the reason you're here today has nothing to do with me or the topic we're going to discuss? What if it has to do with someone else who's in the room? And maybe it's a question they're going to ask, or maybe it's an answer they're going to give, or maybe it's the simple fact that they're here. Or maybe it's the fact that you're here and the impact that that's going to have on somebody else. So to answer your question, we really want to move to a different level of consciousness, of awareness, to get, get inside, paying attention to what's going on around us. Um, when I think of a particular example in, in response to what you've asked me or what, a comment you've made, I could literally spend the rest of the day unpacking that. Why did I bring that up? Why did that occur to me? And then I go back to the conversation that I had. So this person we're talking about, why was that the story that occurred to me that, would, that we would use as a focal point for this, this conversation? And there's a lot of learning in there for me, irrespective of whatever we, we happen to be doing right now or the fact that we're recording this conversation. And in, in almost every exchange as we go through our day, that stuff is going on. So for this individual and other people who are thinking, I worked really hard to get to this space, but I don't know what to do next. The things that have caught our attention over the course of our life that have been appealing to us that have been looking for us. And by that, I mean, they've been looking for our particular approach to solving a problem, the way that we show up and interact with people, the kind of compassion perhaps that we bring to others, that they've been looking for that from us through the course of our life. And we may have intersected with that over the course of living. Maybe we volunteered for a cause like that, or maybe we've worked in that space. But the people we're talking to now are those that have sensed that over the course of their life, but maybe it was felt like a cloud and they grabbed for it and there was nothing there. We talked about this earlier where it feels like there's a little kid po poking her head around the corner and when you, when you go to see who's there, she's gone and she's around the next corner down the hall and mm -hmm. you keep kind of chasing this thing that you can't seem to get your hands around. Um, so part of this comes from reflecting on coming back to who I am, coming back to the things that are uniquely me. Um, those, those two questions, what I'm really good at. You, you point to, to three really great things. Questions to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. What am I really good at? Who am I? Mm -hmm. What do I want? we rarely spend the time, give ourselves the time to sit and contemplate about what's possible. Right. To think about what could be created as mm -hmm. opposed to 
uh, what just needs to fill the space. Right. I, I need to do something. Yeah. And, and it's not about doing. No. So. But before you go there, I, what I'm seeing mm -hmm. is a, a, a clear action for someone to take would be to take up the practice of journaling. Yeah. To actually put that to paper mm -hmm. so that you have something else to refer back to as you move along the way and you get to test some of the assumptions and the things that you speculated around yeah. as you go through the process, right? And to maybe get even more tangible, what if instead of taking you for a beer and having a really rich dialogue, what if I took me for a beer? Dude, I'm going to totally do that. And, and took that question for a beer or a walk or, I don't know, find a park and just sit in and, and just really invite and hold a space for that reflection to occur. Yes. And be okay with the fact that your first impulse, your brain is gonna jump in and say, I don't know, I don't know. Quit asking me, I'm uncomfortable, I don't right. know. It's okay to be uncomfortable. To push through that. Push through it. That would be the other you piece. You can't of get an answer if you won't ask the question. 